Hey guys, I'm Shwaib. Today I'm here with the a dumpster. I mean the cyber truck. As we all know, looks are in everything, so let's give this bad boy a fair shot and see if there's any personality under that unique design. In terms of the design, it's a boxy build. You have sharp edges on the corners, you have the triangular profile on the sides, which kind of reminds me of my doodles back in elementary school. I guess doodles do come true. The design is the biggest attention seeking I've seen in a car after a while, but it's simple. The stainless steel body, which is actually bulletproof minus the windows. It's unique and eye catching, but I can't help but compare it to like a dumpster. But jokes aside though, you just get one option for the exterior and that's just the silver stainless steel. If you want a different color or look you will have to customize it yourself and get it wrapped or sand it down and make like a reflecting mirror look all of which people have actually done the doors are heavy you can feel it when you're pushing it in and pushing it out but for the other parts like the tailgate which has the power gates and there are motors and gears that help to auto open it which is quick and effortless for example to access the charging port you just press on the screen or you can press on the button of the charger and it will open the lid and then you can actually charge charge it and for closing you just like slightly touch it and it will automatically close on its own but since it was my first time you can see like I was trying to push it and like close it myself but then I realized the power adjusting kicked in and it slowly closed it speaking of the charging port I like how it's designed to be hidden on the outer frame of the wheel which is a nice touch leaving the rest of the truck like clean and minimalistic going along with its all around silver stainless steel look and it's nice it's done effortlessly all in all it's a boxy design and seems way too simple to a point where I wouldn't be surprised if a kid like doodled it. It's completely different from any other trucks we have seen on the road, especially with its minimalistic design, no door handles, just push buttons and you pull the door open and you go from there. But more on the exteriors, there are a bunch of cameras all around the truck on the front, on the sides and rear. I believe in total the Cybertruck has eight cameras. And as you can see, the whole body frame is stainless steel all around. And there are big light bars both on the front and on the back, which really gives it like a futuristic touch. And I do really like that. Like it looks super cool in the dark or at night. And then you just have the regular headlights and the rear lights. Overall on the exterior, you have four doors, all of which open with the push of a button. There are no door handles, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they don't have any door handles, like do it like every other Tesla. So I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they will add that in the next episode iteration so that was kind of weird but I do want to note that the doors are really heavy so like when you're pulling it like that you, you can feel it they are heavy and that's because of the stainless steel moreover you have big wheels they are 20 inch diameter by 9 inch width and to top that all there's a big windshield wiper which is unlike any other car or truck I've seen like it kind of seems unnecessary and I don't think it gets the complete windshield like there are some parts that it doesn't completely wipe off but you know it, it gets the part where the driver needs to see so it does the job but doesn't completely get everything like traditional windshield wipers would and then you have the cargo bed which can hold plenty of stuff it's pretty spacious and then there's a frunk which gives you even more storage which can hold up to like two carry-on luggages and maybe a few more items personally in my experience the frunk looks less like a storage area we're used to seeing in other cars but more like just like a flat surface kind of like a bench so you get like a portable bench wherever you go which is actually nice like for like football tailgate parties or it's great if you ever want to sit and wonder how life is like a box of chocolates. When it comes to the interiors, it's minimalistic. There are a few buttons. You have leather seats, a small rear mirror. There is a big display in the center, which I will talk about later for all controls. You use this display for all the controls in the car, aside from the ones where there are our dedicated buttons for, like the ones in the door and stuff like that. I was comfortable in the seats. I like the seats. They have a power adjusting for both the passenger and the driver's seat, which is unlike my current SUV, which is the RAV4 XLE Hybrid which only has power adjusting just for the driver's seat so it's nice that they have it for the passengers as well and lastly there is plenty of room in this thing there's plenty of leg room and space inside both for storage and people so you can sit comfortably for you know, hours and you won't feel crammed or anything like that so in general the interior is super minimalistic and comfortable
Up next, we have something that I really like the Cybertrucks for, or just Tesla in general, and that is the tech. And most of it you can see on the internals, but obviously, you know, they connect with everything on the externals as well. So especially the cameras and various other sensors in the car to make it all really come together. So on the internal, you have this big 18.5 inches display, which is in the front for the drivers and the passenger. And then on the rear for the more passengers in the back, you have a smaller 9.4 inches display with which you can control you know some of the settings like the fans and stuff you can also watch like Netflix or YouTube and some other streaming services as well so that's a nice addition on the main display there are plenty of applications there are a lot more applications on the main display you can play games you can watch Netflix YouTube stuff like that but there's just one tech that we all wish it had which it doesn't and that is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which is a big disappointment especially in my experience like I use Android auto all the time on my current SUV and they have such a nice display like this display they have made it specifically for this car environment having a touch screen display for cars and so like it's super reliable uh, super interactive fast response it's just like a big tablet that is like well put together so if it's a disappointment that it doesn't have Android auto or Apple CarPlay would have been a nice touch so you know there's no Google Maps you do have to use their navigation which isn't the best but you can see how they don't have you know they don't allow android auto or carplay because they want you to stay within their ecosystem and use their navigation software but there are some benefits to it which i will talk about later there are plenty of camera views on the display which changes based on the current state of the vehicle like if you're at a stop sign it will show the side views where you can see the cars passing by which can be helpful if you are like slightly off on the lane or something like that so you can readjust your car to avoid any accidents so more on the built-in navigation by Tesla it has great graphics which I really like and in particular the vehicle can view the traffic lights and signs and stuff like that like your surroundings like the other vehicles and stuff but one thing in particular that I really like is the fact that it can see the traffic lights and it will make a sound when it turns green giving you the go you know you're good to drive which I found really helpful and I feel like more cars need this particular feature because there are many times people would like stop at a stop sign and either get on their phone or or talk to the person next to them and kind of forget that they're stopped at a stop sign and they lose track of when it turns green and so usually the driver behind them and if that's me I'll perhaps honk at them if they're there for more than like you know 10 seconds 30 seconds but that's one nice thing I have found during my test drive that it will make a sound when it turns green and then you can go so when I first drove a Tesla which was the Model Y I had found myself distracted by the infotainment system since it's so big and it's constantly changing based on where you're driving or if you're stopped and the different angles and the camera views and stuff like that. It was a bunch of settings. I just felt kind of overwhelmed when I first test drove it. But this time around, I wasn't as distracted, perhaps like I got used to it. So there's definitely a lot of small things in the car that like you'll need to get used to, which for the most part should come easy after like a week or two weeks of use. So it's not a problem, but it did bother me initially when I first test drove a Tesla. It bothered me that there so much going on but this time around I was at ease I kind of got used to the technology fairly quick and for the most part they all enhance your experience overall and speaking of enhanced experience let's talk about the self-driving I didn't get to tell self-driving myself on the Cybertruck but I've been in a friend's Tesla Model 3 which had full self-driving and I got to experience it and the same technology is going to be on the Cybertruck so if you do get that if you get Cybertruck with the full self-driving option you will experience experience the similar experience that you experience in the many other Tesla models so it's the same technology but all I want to say about the self-driving is that it works it definitely works and it's super futuristic and like super cool to experience but it's definitely not full self-driving yet it still needs assistance you still need to keep your eye on the road and at times you need to help the car maneuver faster or to prevent accidents and stuff like that there are times when the car will like hesitate to cross especially if it's like you are taking a left turn on like a two-lane road or something it kind of hesitates so the technology is definitely getting better though and I'm sure one day we'll have a truly self-driving and what we're seeing now are definitely great steps to that future but currently it's not completely there yet like you've probably seen the demos of their robo taxis and stuff like that and even the Tesla Model Y the Model 3 and all the Tesla models with their self-driving it's not fully there yet but it is cool to see that one day it will get there it will get better and we'll see from there
But moreover, I want to talk about the reverse parking. I have never parked a truck before, so I was a little nervous going into it. But the parking was surprisingly easy. And that is all thanks to their cameras giving all different angles, making it super easy and park friendly. So on the display, I saw like the bird eye view, which shows like the parking spot and the cars around you and gives you a fairly accurate representation of the parking lot in general and then where your vehicle is in respect to everything else. And then you get the side views, which you can see on like the side mirrors. And the most helpful, obviously, is the rear camera, which with guiding lines and whatnot, they all come together for like a smooth and safe parking experience. And really, every time you park, you really see all those technology coming together. Yes, a lot of modern cars have the reverse camera view, and that's usually pretty much it. But with the whole 3D bird eye view and stuff like that, it really comes together. And lastly, there are other smaller techs in the car, which I have not mentioned yet. So you have wireless charging for both the driver and the passenger. And then you have like four USB type C ports for other passengers. So like everyone in the car gets their own port and you can like, you know, charge up your device. I feel like that's becoming a standard in many modern cars. Like my RAV4 Hybrid XLE also has these features as well. Moving on, let's talk about the cargo. So the cargo bed is big. It's pretty big. It's even bigger than the classic F-150. So you have plenty of space for storage, We're using it as a pickup truck and stuff like that. So if you ever need to move furniture and stuff, you have plenty of space to do all that. Moreover, one feature that is different on the Cybertruck than any other truck is their standard hardcover, which kind of like rolls out and then rolls back in if you ever want to take stuff out. And it's very secure. Like when it's rolled out, it's like locked in. So you can put stuff on the back of your cyber truck and leave it there for days without having to worry about being stolen or anything like that because it's locked in it's just like a trunk in like any other car and i found that really nice i think that's a cool feature i like the mechanism you can just press a button and it will open and you can press a button and it will close so you can like secure stuff like that so you, you can use your the truck for storage because a lot of the time when you're not using your pickup truck for like you know moving furniture or moving stuff around 99 percent of the time it's just there you know there's nothing there and it's just like open so for those purposes when you're not not actually like actively moving stuff or like things like that you could just leave stuff there and just lock it up and so you just have your tools or sports gear and stuff like that just easily accessible that's just in your car and it's secure so that's definitely a nice touch i do want to mention though the tail will open with the press of a button which is with the buttons that also open the hard cover and it will open using the power gates and stuff like that but it doesn't close using the power gates which is kind of dumb and i guess maybe they just forgot to add that feature but the gears and the motors are will still help you but you still have to manually like lift it close maybe they will fix this in the next version right now you have to manually close it but you can press a button and it will open i mean it's like a minor inconvenience Moving on, let's talk about the driving experience and the performance. In terms of the driving experience, it felt very smooth. Honestly, I had a lot of fun driving this guy, especially for the first time driving a truck. It felt really smooth and I easily picked up the new technology, the new steering wheel and stuff like that. It took me a few minutes to get used to, but I did get used to it and it was not a problem in the long run. But more on the performance. So the all new electric 2024 Cybertruck comes in two trims. You have the dual motor, which has 600 horsepower all-wheel drive model. And then you have 845 horsepower tri-motor Cyber Beast, which also has all-wheel and that's standard for both trims. And for the dual model version, you can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds. And then with the tri-motor, the Cyber Beast, you can achieve this in just 2.6 seconds, which is crazy, especially for like a heavy duty pickup truck. Like I understand how it can do that just as fast with like the smaller, lighter models, but like with the truck which is way heavier than say the model y or model 3 model x so it's very impressive that it can still do that with 2.6 seconds for the cyber beast model and that's kind of cool to see so performance wise there's a lot of horsepower in this thing and it is fast it is quick you press the accelerator and it will start right away and that is because of their new technology which they made just for the cyber truck and that is steer by wire and basically rather than having actual hardware and mechanisms like linked directly together in order to move the wheels they use electronic signals to communicate from the computer on the device to the electronic parts on the wheels and that's how it communicates and for the most part it's instant there have been videos where i've seen where people talk about like there's a slight lag but it's not very noticeable it's probably very small and i'm sure over time they're going to get better at that but with this mechanism it makes it more reliable so in the long run you don't have to worry about like physical hardware being damaged and stuff like that and also this 
gives you more space. You don't need as much hardware underneath the car for all the movements. It's just electronic signals and that can just be passed through wire. And that's usually like a minimalistic, it takes less space. So this gives the Cybertruck like a lot more space within the car. And I think that's one thing like earlier I've been mentioned, it's very spacious. And that's one of the reason with their steer by wire technology, you get a lot more space in the car for leg room. And that's very nice. So I do like this new technology that they have implemented and it's performing really well. Moving on to the battery, you can get up to 334 miles on single charge and you can buy portable range extenders which will be available in the future. Third party companies have released like portable rechargeable battery packs that you can put on your trunk or the cargo bed and like charge your cyber truck when needed and that can extend your overall mileage the car can cover so just like keeping it charged on the go. But however I do want to mention that like charging does take forever still and that's like the main thing with Tesla like personally I would not get one. One right now especially because of that like that's one of my reasons like charging takes forever to go from 0 to 100 like you're looking at approximately one hour even with a supercharger so like if you don't have like your own charger at home or overnight charging like EVs in general aren't a good idea for you like if you are not gonna have your own charger at home I don't see myself spending 30 minutes to an hour at like an external you know outside charging lot where I have to be in the car or something like that and that just doesn't seem very convenient convenient like especially if you're going on a road trip it's not very convenient in those sense like it takes forever to charge Moving on to the price, when it comes to the price, the cheapest Cybertruck with all-wheel drive starts at 80k and with all the packages and additional features, the Cybertruck can be maxed out with a price of around 200k and that is uh, the Cyber Beast version. But you can get like a reasonable all-around Cybertruck for around 120k, so that's what like maybe not all the cool features, but you can get like like a fair amount of feature, like a reasonable amount of features, it will be around 120k. And all in all, you know, that's uh, super expensive the cyber truck is super expensive but the price will definitely come down in the next few years like we have seen with the other models as well so over the next few iterations of the cyber truck as the technology gets better and the manufacturing they can mass produce it a lot faster and stuff like that it can reduce costs overall the price will come down eventually like we have seen with the other models as well Moving on to things that I like and things that I don't like. Starting with things that I like, I love the technology, the futuristic light bar, both on the front and on the rear. The front is nice, you know, more space is always a plus. The rolling and closing of the hardcover of the cargo bed is solid. The big display with the great visuals of the car is definitely futuristic. And overall, the interior with its minimalistic look, I really do like that. In addition, I do want to mention self-driving and self-parking features are cool, although I did not get to test that myself i have seen videos of it and it's definitely futuristic in those aspects lastly steer by wire the new technology created for the cyber truck is definitely efficient and it does the job it's a lot faster making quick maneuvers with little movements on the steering wheel and overall the stainless steel body actually looks great in person which also makes it tough and a solid build for things i don't like i don't like the fact that they just have like a very tiny rear mirror there's no door handles, the tailgate doesn't auto close like the way it opens, there's no Android Auto or CarPlay to take advantage of that big display. Steering wheel is an oval, it's not the full circle that we're used to, but it does look futuristic, it does look cool, but it's definitely not practical. And it's way too expensive, the Cybertruck is super expensive. In addition to all this, there's a lot of things, a lot of new things to get used to, from Tesla's driving mechanism, how as soon as you let go of the accelerator, it starts braking which will take you some time to get used to to get into your natural habit of driving it the build quality is solid but in durability tests there have been cases of the rear frame breaking off during heavy duty towing and so hopefully they will fix that in the future and lastly self-driving isn't fully autonomous you still need to you know keep your eye on the road and have your hands on the steering wheel in case it's hesitating or is not necessarily making the right moves in conclusion, there is definitely personality under that unique design. In fact, some may even argue that there's too much personality. It's attention seeking, it's bold and brave with all that new built from ground up design and structure along with new technologies, especially the stair by wire. So who is the Cybertruck really for? It's definitely not for the common person. It's just not there yet. I would wait a few years for the next edition with you know design fixes and more added features for such a big price 
price like I would also wait for the price to come down which will definitely happen so currently it feels like an SUV than a truck which is good you can use it as like a daily driver but if you want it for the sole purpose of being a truck it's not quite there yet in terms of build quality and structure for towing which has been proven to break off like the rear frame breaks off due to heavy duty towing so all in all it's futuristic and cool to experience so if you can like go to your nearest Tesla dealership and get a demo test drive but in terms of currently buying it I would not recommend it at all well that is it for today don't forget to like and comment subscribe ring that bell icon and as always have a superb day and thanks for watching